Hi there. This message is brought to you by House 316. God bless you as you listen. How many people have not, you've not got in your diary, proudly put your hands and say, C-O-C-A. Now, now we know they're here. Okay, put your hands down. Um, there is, uh, could be a little bit expensive for some people. So if, if that's the case for you, get a hardcover notebook. It has to be hardcover notebook. It must be hardcover notebook. And anytime you're writing something, please make sure you write a date. Is that okay? Praise God. Please, um, every Sunday when we come here, this place, this ground, is not just for us to come and listen and just go or meet others and go. This is a solution ground. You must know it. You must know it. If you have issues at home, this is the more reason why you should come to church. This is like hospital. You have issue. God, I'm coming with this issue. This is how you get your issues solved. You must believe that God has the solution for your issue here. You must believe it. Is that okay? Please, you must understand that challenges must come. And there's a reason why challenges must come. You see, the more you try to avoid challenges, the more your dreams become smaller. But as far as you dream bigger, your challenges become bigger. That is why people who do business in millions, they will once in a while perhaps lose hundreds of thousands. Then if your business is in hundred thousands, you'll be losing tens of thousands. You are seeing that? So if you don't want to ever lose up to 100,000, don't, don't do business of millions. And guess what? Anytime God gives you a word, Satan will begin to attack you immediately. Immediately. The angel of God came and told Mary that what? You are highly favored. Immediately he told her that she entered into trouble. Till the birth of Jesus, Mary was in trouble. But here came the word, you are highly favored. Amen. So you must understand that as, let me give you an illustration. Come, two people, come. Two of you, come, come, come. The two of you, come. Let me give you an illustration. Look at these two people. That's what the Bible says. Okay, I want to give you the, okay, stand here. Stand here. No, face that side. Now, this is me. This is you. Okay? Me is you now. All of you. This is what the Bible says. That, um, what did the Bible say? He said, how do you guys do? Share the grace. Share the grace, let me hear. Jesus Christ. God. The sea fellowship. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You see, what was the meaning of surely? Certainly. Definitely. Right? Surely, what will happen? Okay, two things. This is what? Goodness. This is mercy. No, this is mercy. <laughs> this is goodness. Right? So this is goodness. He says what? Surely, goodness and what? Mercy. Shall what? Shall what? So wherever I'm going, therefore, you guys should be following me now. That's what the Bible says. Wherever I'm going, there will be what? Wherever I'm going, there will be what? When? Is it all? All the days of my life? What does it mean? If I'm walking through challenges, goodness and mercy are still... 
can go back to your seat. You must understand this. Now, um, this is, you see, I told you about season when we began this um, series. I told you every season comes with challenges and opportunities. Please, listen to me. I beg you. Listen to me. I beg you. Any time you are in a problem, problem, this one, this issue, this one, always know that by your right hand is goodness. By your left hand is mercy. They are with you all the days of your life. Father, thank you. Glory be to your name. So much God is doing in this season that those who are easily discouraged will miss a lot that is in stock for them. I'm telling you the truth. By the grace of God in one assembly, God's word came. If you're there and if you can remember, after, on, during prophetic night, prophetic night, God's word, words came. And I prophesy that someone this year will buy a car. And I specify that it's going to be a red car. I specified twice. Um, I, some of you, I know. My logic, that one is my logic that told me, not the spirit of God, it's my logic that told me. Some of you that were there know that I love red. So in your mind, you say, I say red car because I love. Last week on Monday, my baby called me. Huh? Picklef. Picklef called me and said, Sir, do you remember you prophesy that um, somebody would buy a new car? I'm the one. And she bought it. And she sent me the picture of the red car. Guess what? I didn't tell like this. Listen, I didn't tell like this. You know, sometimes me, it will just be like, so I'll just, I'll just forget it. Look, to go who made me. Huh? To go who made me. I'm standing on the altar of God. When she sent me the car, and I saw it. It was the exact car that I saw. That I didn't tell her this. She told me when I said this, when I said that, she believes that it was her. She caught it. Father, thank you. God is going to do yours in the mighty name of Jesus. The reason why we testify this is so that you get encouraged. If God can do, to, do it to this one, he can equally do it for you. It's the same, the same God that is doing for everyone. Praise God. We're in a season of wisdom. And that is why my people, please, whatever it will take, Pursue, search, and seek for wisdom, knowledge. Are you getting me? No matter what. See, let me tell you something that will surprise you. Huh? Do you know that there are only two, one, two, only two ways to bind Satan? Only two. There are only two ways in this world to bind Satan. Number one, through prayers. Number two is knowledge. There's no any other way. What, see, whatever satanic attack you're facing now, you have only two options to fight it. One is prayers, and number two is knowledge. Already you know that prayer, yeah, you agree, but you would want that knowledge. Jesus did that to us. When Satan tempted him, he used knowledge to deal with him. He bind him by knowledge. He knew a verse. If demons of poverty are pursuing you, you pray, 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 that option doesn't work. The next thing is you need knowledge. Apply the knowledge. The poverty will run away naked. Have you ever seen naked poverty? <laughs> And I just imagine he'll be running with, with his money, with his tantrums. 
with white legs. <laughs> Two ways. Guys, you must know this. You must know it. My people are destroyed because they lack knowledge. My people. It's God that was saying it. It was not them that were saying, my God. You know, it's, it's a two different thing. It's just like saying, I, I, have, uh, I have the governor's phone number. That's not a problem. Does the governor have your number? Which one is more, which one is more important? The governor have your phone. So it's the same thing. It is not the people that are saying, our God. It is God that is saying, my people are destroyed because they lack knowledge. No matter what you will do, search and look for wisdom. Praise God. Please, listen. Um, next Sunday, um, I'll be teaching on how to get wisdom. You guys remember I did how to get wisdom last week or two weeks ago. I can't remember. Okay. Now, um, I, I just picked one and I showed you Okay, so now I'm, I'm doing the rest of them. The, the Kai, oh God. See, please, no matter what, come to church next Sunday. Do everything you can to come to church next Sunday. You're going to see practically from the scriptures. Pra- In fact, it's something that you can start applying while I'm even teaching it. And you'll just be sensing wisdom. Please, wisdom is sense to you sense it. You sense it. That is why sometimes when you take a foolish decision, you just realize that that was foolish of you. And guess what? Anytime you tell yourself that I was foolish, you have just gained wisdom. Anytime you realize that you're foolish, you know, the difference between wise people and foolish people is that wise people realize their foolishness. Foolish people don't realize their foolishness. So they remain foolish. All of us have taken some foolish steps before. Is that right? You dated that girl. They just like, what? I know I was foolish. Why should I have? This girl, no, her bad. Or the girl will have dated you or dated a guy. I say, What? Let's see this, this guy. Why did I even date this guy? Because you, you just realize that you are foolish. Then at that point, you become wiser. Praise God. So today I will show you, the scripture will show us the need for wisdom. The need for wisdom. The need for wisdom. This is how God, um, Shady, you're looking good. Those, your rich, what size are you wearing? What size that? What size? Don't lie. <laughs> what, what is the size? Huh? 42. Okay. Guys, sir. That 44. That this, you know, is not even after service. You remove it now. <laughs> okay. But it's looking cool. Cool. So, um, you see, this is how God designed this world. He designed, please, uh, please listen. Okay. He designed this world and then he put plenty things huh? and coded them. Those coded things that he put are for his people. They are like advantages. They are called advantage systems for his own people. Now, so he created one of them and it's called wisdom. Huh? That's why wisdom is not wisdom is not um, is not um, everybody that has can can have access to it. No, 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 it's not. Okay, so he coded them so that his children, where they are moving, and they come to this point, then I need wisdom. Then the wisdom comes, they apply, and then they move. Are you getting me? Did, did you get what I've just explained? Did you get that? Please, listen to me. Listen. 
Let me make emphasis on this point. Whatever, whatever, health issue, um, business, relationship, whatever issue you have, whatever issue you have, huh? whatever challenge you are going through, please don't give up. Hold on. Hold on. Um, listen to this. Scientists put up an artificial biosphere. Biosphere is one of the strata of the space on Earth. So, um, that contains life. That's where well, biosphere, the sphere that can accommodate life. So, it's natural. So, they try and put an artificial one. They created an artificial biosphere. Okay? And then they put, they planted trees. It's covered. It's different from green. Uh -huh. So, it's, it's covered. So, um, all the gases that are available in biosphere are sampled and we are put into the biosphere. So, it's an um, and uh, it's, it's a controlled environment, an environment that is controlled by the scientist, the biosphere. Are you getting me? So they did everything, the nutrients that the plant needs and all that, and then the trees started growing up. Then they observed that when the trees grow up, they'll fall. They'll put it to fall. They, they will fall. So they went and brought the strongest trees and planted them. Then they will grow, they will still be weak and fall. So they are, why? So they started doing the research, and guess what they found out? They found out that there's one, one element that is missing, that is making them weak, and that is wind. Wind. So what the wind does is that the wind pushes them, and then they resist. It makes their muscles strong. You have seen that? So they realize that wind makes plants strong. And winds are like challenges. Challenges come, you stand, you become stronger. You are getting me? Let me tell you another illustration. In Japan, Japan Japanese people love fish. Japanese people love, generally they love um, aquatic animals. Uh -huh. the low, I don't know. They, they just me. I'm, it's only fish I can eat from inside water. All those things that it brings you see them. I don't. They look. Them <laughs> mothers went. Wow. You see, they'll bring one fish. The fish is round. Me, if it's not normal fish, I don't eat. <laughs> Even catfish, I don't, I don't like catfish. It has. Uh, it, it, ah. <laughs> <laughs> just normal fish. You know, uh -huh, I'll eat it. <laughs> but any fish that looks, you see fish round. Oh, there, there are so, there's a, a fish that is a mystery. Scientists are still studying it. Um, um, I can't remember the name of the fish. Um, but I can, I can get it later. Uh, is it, is it foia or fly or some, something like that? The fish, um, me, I cannot eat those kind of fish. The, the fish, if they want to mate, huh? they want to mate. So they will come and mate. That's the male, female and male. Once they come and mate, right? They'll fuse into one. Yes. How can I eat that kind of fish? <laughs> 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 yeah, so there's a mystery behind that. I, I just studied it. I, I, if I, we, we, you know, there's something hidden in that. So I was talking about Japanese. They love fish. They love generally aquatic. So, but they love fish. So, and they have their seas, ocean. Okay, their seas, uh, waters cannot uh, accommodate plenty fish. They don't have good waters like that. So they will have to go far into the sea to get fish. Are you getting me? But they love fish. So when they go far and catch fish, 
You know, they take days before they come back. So when they come back and they will sell, then the people say, no, these are not fresh fish. So those fish became cheaper. Then fresh fish were more expensive. And fresh fish became uh, scarce. So they, they, so they were looking for fresh fish. Then the, the one they just catch, then uh, within one or two hours, they can get it, fresh fish. But those ones that would do this. So these guys didn't know what to do. So the scientists said, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to build our ships with freezers, refrigerators. Okay? So they went, they caught the fish, put them in the refrigerators, okay? And then they came back. And when the people ate, they said, still, it's not fresh. We still took days and the blood it was blocked and all so it's still not fresh. They want fresh from the water. Then say, okay, what will they do again? They crack their head. They say, okay, this time around, we're going to make uh, a sumi pool inside, inside the sheep. You get right? So if we catch the fish, it will still be sumi pool, sumi, sumi pool inside the sheep, and then they will drive back. Right? So they did that. So the fish will be inside. You know, it's still big water. Now, waters have different compartments. It's not because you see plenty of water like this. Not, they have different. When you move, this place will taste different. This, uh -huh. So when they are moving from their natural habitat, they move, move, they get to another, then the fish will die. Before they get, it's still not fresh. So what will they do? So they crack their head and say, okay, what we're going to do is we are going to fetch the water from the natural habitat of the fish and do a swimming pool inside. We will not allow the swimming pool to get contaminated with any other water. You get? So they did swimming pool inside the ship. So they caught the fish, put them inside the swimming pool, and then they drove back. So before they could get to Japanese, the fish will all die. They want, ah, it's the same. We give them food. So they calculated the research. Guess what? They found out that those fishes, where they caught them, there are plenty of sharks. Okay? So one of the scientists suggested they should do that. So uh, they did the same thing now, only that this time around, they picked two small sharks and put them inside the water. Then the fish, because they know that sharks are there, they cannot die. So they'll be running, they know that fish, they won't die. <laughs> Until they got to Japanese and then the people had fresh fish. So the challenges made them to be what? Alive. Challenges will always make you alive. In case you don't know, scientists, scientists have proved that your brain becomes more active when you're in problem. You, you think. You, where you're not even thinking, you're, you will just be thinking. <laughs> Amen. My point is, please, Whatever challenge, whatever challenge you are going through, always remember goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of it. We recite this thing every day. So always recite it to yourself. God, where is the mercy? I need the mercy now. Then the mercy will appear and say, here am I. But some of you, the mercy has been following you, but you've never known. Goodness following you. You've never, because at that point you believe there is nothing good about you. So the goodness will just be looking at you like this. There's nothing you can do. You don't even make use of it. Whatever you're going through, please hold on. Let me promise you, I promise by God's word that all of us will make it. After all, you know we've signed it. So, so you don't even have the right. You fail. We must make it in the mighty name of Jesus. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 13. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 13. Blessed, Kai, can you just give me uh, um, King James Version? Happy is the man that founded wisdom and the man that gets it. Uh, happy. I'm giving you, I'm showing you the need for wisdom. Happiness comes by 
finding wisdom. If you want to be happy, find wisdom and get it. Find it and get it. Find it. Do you want to be happy? Where is wisdom? That's what the Bible says. Happy is the man that finds wisdom. When you find wisdom, happiness comes with it. I'm showing the need for wisdom. See, guys, please don't, don't, oh my God, don't miss any series of this wisdom. Next Sunday, I'll teach you how to get this wisdom. You will see it. Another Sunday, I will teach you wisdom for warfare. You need wisdom for war. So, you, so, so if you, you need wisdom for war, faith. Don't ever go to war if you are not sure you win. It's wisdom. And you see that from scriptures. Don't ever, any war that you know you are not going to win, don't go. Before you go to any war, know your enemy. Know your enemy. All this. So, there's, we're going to do wisdom for wealth. There's going to be wisdom for settling debt. You know debt, bashi. Wisdom for settling debt. Wisdom for business. We're going to check. So, don't miss this series. But now, before we get into all that, we're checking on with the need for wisdom. Why? If you are here, if you are not happy, Perhaps it's because you've not found wisdom. Proverbs 8, 11. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 11. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. It's just telling you that in all your desires, let wisdom be above. Do you desire car? Wisdom should be above. Because why? The car can come. Lack of wisdom will crash the car. You see not? I think in one of the one of Sundays we, we talked about um, uh, he has given us all things that pertain to life, right? You guys remember? And goldness through what? Knowledge, you guys remember? So don't look for, don't run after this, run for knowledge. The need for it. The need for it. Look, oh my God. See, I just realized something. Hmm? I just realized something that God is more interested in developing you first before he gives you your inheritance. He's more interested in developing you. You become developed. Then he grants you your inheritance. He knows that when you are not developed and he gives you your inheritance, the enemy will take it away from you. If you check out all through the scriptures, it's, it's a normal principle of God. And that is why you too, if you are wise, enjoy that process of developing. That process that you're developing, enjoy it and develop yourself. Are you getting me? He's more interested in your capacity. See, your capacity is more important to him than what you put inside of it. Um, we know the story of um, that widow that Elijah came. Is it Elijah or Elisha? One of those guys um, that came and said, um, what do you have in the house? She said, they are, they are, they are, uh, small oil. You guys remember? Small oil. And what did he say? You see, he was not interested in giving her more oil. He was more interested in her getting more capacity to accommodate the oil. You are seeing that? 
So if she was a foolish woman, she would have just gone to borrow very few. But if she was wise, she would have gotten more drums. Go and bring tankers and that. More interested in that, developing. You guys must know this. It is not about getting what you want. It is first of all about getting the wisdom required to run that thing that you want. Just you want to go to business, I need capital. No, so if you don't need capital, you need wisdom. You don't need capital. You don't even know what capital is. They went for one business seminar and this woman came. Uh, she made this guy, the, the resource person, say, sir, I have a problem. He said, what's your problem? He said, sir, I need capital. I have this beautiful business idea. Uh, I'm a widow. I need him. So, okay, how much is the business? Then the woman said, it's just 30,000 naira. Okay, 30,000 naira. She said, sir, if I can get 30 K, my life will change. I'll do this. Then she, he said, okay, come, 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 come. I like that. Then she came out. I said, okay, good. Okay, you need to, okay. But before then, oh, wow. I like your veil. She was putting on veil. It looks fine. Um, I think my wife will need this veil. Like, how much did you buy this veil? She says it's about 2,000 or so. Okay, ah, your watch. I like your watch. I like, my wife too will need this watch. How much is this watch? Yeah. I, I bought this watch, one, eight. Ah, your shoes. So after they did everything, this woman, what she was wearing, what, thirty k. And he told her, woman, you are wearing your capital. <laughs> you are wearing your capital. And guess what? It is not even just wearing the capital. It tells him that she lacks the wisdom to run a business. See, that's what, business is not about money. Oh. They will give you, the, see, you are seated here, they will give you 50M. If you don't have wisdom, that 50K, 50M will disappear. You wonder where, how, what happened. There's wisdom that is a sign for business. And that is why the Bible says what? That you, we should desire that wisdom more than those things. The need for wisdom. That's what I'm telling you, the need. I want you to realize the need. Look, let me tell you something. I did a little opinion poll um, two days ago on Facebook relationship conference. I said, which one um, do you think is the reason why there are more breakups in relationship? So I put lack of trust, lack of uh, compatibility, uh, lack of love, and lack of knowledge. You guys will not believe it. The one that got the least votes as of um, yesterday in the night when I checked was knowledge. That's the least. The one that they think, everybody was thinking that is the reason is lack of trust. I say, I, I just told myself, I say, I said, oh God, your word is true. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. My people are destroyed. Lack knowledge. Look, number one reason why relationships are marriage full is knowledge. Lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. Yet, it was the least in that opinion. Go and check it. It's on relationship because you see it. As of yesterday night, it was still least. This was uh, about 70 votes or so. I can't remember. But it, was, it was the least. You can just imagine. It's not all about, I want to get married. I want a babe. I want a relationship. No. Do you have the wisdom, the knowledge, the right wisdom to maintain marriage, to maintain relationship? Do you have it? Do you have it? Because you're going to get a relationship. It will crash if you don't have it. The need for wisdom. I'm trying to inject this passion into you. To be crazy looking and yearning for wisdom. I'm telling you the truth, guys. Did you get the point? Are you sure? 
Let, let's, let's check out one more point. Proverbs 8. Okay, still Proverbs 8, 35. And then Proverbs 15, 20. For whoso founded me, founded life, and shall obtain favor. There are two things here. Life and favor. Life and favor. Wisdom and favor. There is a story of this man after school, years, there's no job, no work, no nothing. And somehow uh, he made he applied for work everywhere. He was looking for a job everywhere, everywhere, and no job was forthcoming. He was very good. So um um, in one of the companies he applied uh, for a job, they sent him an invitation for interview through his email. And he didn't check his email. They sent it um, two weeks to the interview day, date. But he didn't even check it. So like, he didn't know. He didn't check. So until um, like to, tomorrow... It's going to be the interview, and, and tomorrow is 10 o'clock. The interview is 10. Then today, today, he just went to his email, and then he just found out. And it was a very big company with serious money. And all his life is what he wanted. Today, uh, and he's in Lagos, very far. He's in the north. So it's very, very far. Today, tomorrow is interview, 10 o'clock. How, how will he start? So, it calculated, okay, I want to do night journey, um, like get transport, I will do that. The guy was just calculating, calculating. So, he met one of his guys and told him, and the guy told him, guy, oh boy, if it's, man, it's going to be difficult. The best thing is to just fly. He went, ah, fly, no, he cannot afford it. No, we would look for money, fly. His friend knows him very well. He knows that he's a very intelligent guy. He, he can't, um, you know, he won't disappoint him. So, he, they started looking for flight ticket, money. Ta, 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 borrowed from here, borrow, borrow, borrow. That time, those 20K to Lagos. They borrowed, ta, ta, ta. They were able to get 20K. And then the guy arranged. He took the first flight to, to Lagos the next day. The interview was 10. Uh, Lagos was for the five minutes. And you, you come down fresh. <laughs> if you enter car, <laughs> if you come out as if you, you did wrestling, you went for wrestling, <laughs> wrestling, <laughs> and your brain will be scattered, right? Uh, is that true? You've been to Lagos on flights. You, you understand why you are fresh. And then you just enter car straight. As if you just, you, you know, they you enter car. <laughs> You don't be thinking, you just come down, you are already scattered. Like, yeah. <laughs> Kai, see, the trauma to travel from just to Lagos, just the trauma on the road will get you tired and frustrated. <laughs> so, so the guy landed, um, um, he landed in Lagos. You have seen that, right? When he landed in Lagos, the flight, the, so he was taking his back and all that. Then there was this Baba, the house man that had a back. He was trying to take it. The guy helped him. The guy went down and, and down to, you know, he had to help him. They said, okay, okay. Ah, the boss, this guy uh, is, is, um, is, is such a humble guy. Then he asked him, my son, what are you here doing here in Lagos? What are you? What are you doing? Baba, I actually came to apply for this job, and this, this. this. Well, the conclusion of the story is that at the end, the Baba found out that he applied. The, the job um, interview he was going for was his son's company that the boy was going to. Simple, and that's where the dad was going to. So what do you expect? He just went. The Baba just. Uh, don't <laughs> Don't nick your head. 
The other side don't need, don't go bunker. Come on, there. <laughs> and he got a job. You see, do you guys remember I told you that? See, the first element of wisdom is humility. First. Before any other thing, first is humility. Once you don't, you don't have humility, it is wisdom will run away from you. So this way was humble. And he got what? Favor. So wisdom can give you favor. It can give you life. This cannot be overemphasized. So who is here that is looking for favor? Look for wisdom. Don't look for favor. You see that? Don't look for favor. If you are looking for favor, forget favor. Look for wisdom. Wisdom will not tell you what to do and that thing will attract favor. See, one thing about favor is, well, favor is not found. Favor is attracted. It is something that you do wisely that will attract favor. Favor is not found. Favor is attracted. If I were you, I'd write this in capital letter. Favor is attracted. So the question is, what attracts favor? Wisdom. Proverbs 15, 20. Proverbs 15, 20. A wise son maketh a glad father. But a foolish man despised his mother. If you ever despise your mother, you are you're a, you're a f- fool. <laughs> fool. You know, uh, one of my mentors, Reverend Fidelis Maker, uh, that time that we used to follow him, he would always give this story. This is the funniest story that I had from him. Anytime, it's, I, I was, I've never been tired of this story. Um, there's this guy, they, they went to his family house. The guy is not married. He's for, he was 43 years and he's not married. 43. It's not just that he's not married. He's staying in parents' house. It's not ju- just that he's staying in his parents' house. He's eating their food. <laughs> and he's not contributing anything because he's not working. So that day, Fidelis Maker went. You understand? He went and he sat down in the parlor. Then the guy came. The 43 year <laughs> jobless guy. He's not married. He's eating the food. He came. Say, he asked the mother. After a greeting, he asked, he asked his mother, Mama, me kundafa. That's, Mommy, what did you cook? Then he said, uh, Gote, Gote is soup. Okay? Uh, it's. it's uh, um, gote is one of the dishes in the north. Gote is, is like soup. So, so it's gote that we cook. Then the guy went to the kitchen, fetched the gote, then went and entered his room. You know, there's Paolo, one of the rooms. Then he entered. Then he started eating. He said, Mama! Gote mba <laughs> That, Mommy, the gote has no salt. Then Fidel is making... <laughs> He said, no, 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 you can't keep quiet. <laughs> okay, okay, well, so um, a wise son, a wise son make it a glad father. Yeah, you know the rest. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> that's a good conclusion, you know the rest. He tell his maker, you understand. <laughs> uh, so when, when he was done with the guy, when he was going, the mom came and said, now, go, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. <laughs> and you know, but when Felix Maker was talking, you know, Felix Maker is an, is, is an athlete. He, yeah, he represented uh, Plateau State Government. So he's actually he's strong. So he said that day when he was challenging the boy, but he was ready to beat him. The guy, ah, he would beat him. <laughs> Mama. Okay, <laughs> no, 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 no. So, um, I, you're getting me right. 
um, if you are here, you want to make your father happy. Be a wise son. In fact, please listen to me. In fact, if you if you are here, you want to pay back. If you want to pay your parents back for what they've done to you, look for wisdom. Don't look for what to do for them. No, no, no. Look for wisdom. Wisdom, where are you? Get it. Automatically, you will do things that will please them. And that is why it takes wisdom to be able to honor somebody. You have to be wise to honor. You get? You have to be wise. There are a few things. Humility is one of them. Then wisdom is one of them for you to be able to honor someone. If you want to honor your parents, if you want to honor your parents, please look for wisdom. Once you get wisdom, your parents will be happy. Did you get that? Amen. Proverbs 19.8. Second to the last verse. Proverbs 19, verse 8. He that getteth wisdom, loveth his own soul. He that keepeth understanding shall find good. <coughs> How many of you love yourself? Here, you love yourself? If you love yourself, you see, he that getteth wisdom, loveth his own soul. If you don't get wisdom, you can't even love yourself. It takes wisdom to be able to say, yes, I love my soul. Do you know, do you know what it's telling you here? It's telling you, just like we saw, this is now a confirmation, that verse. Wisdom is actually equal to life. If you love yourself, you don't want to die. Go and get wisdom. Because he who finds wisdom finds life. That's what the Bible says. Good comes by understanding. Good doesn't just come by chance. It comes by understanding. And understanding, knowledge, there are two elements of wisdom. There is no wisdom without knowledge and understanding. It is the combination of the two that gives wisdom after applying the two. Wisdom is a spirit. It is also knowledge, the application of knowledge that you understand. You're getting that? Proverbs chapter 24, verse 14. Please don't miss next Sunday. Oh. Please. Next Sunday. I'll give you five ways it's not how to get wisdom. I'll give you five way, five places that wisdom is hidden. If something is hidden, it means it's not meant for everybody. Is that right? You see, that's a proof. So, and this wisdom, you will find out that it's hidden. You see the word hid. You see the word find. Anything that is found means it's hidden. Because if it's not hidden, there's no need to find. So I give you five ways, not five places where wisdom is hidden. So if you are looking for wisdom, go to those places. Go to those five places. You will see, you know, you know how serious this thing, we don't bring anything from logic. You see them from scriptures. You see that, eh, wisdom is hidden here. Wisdom is hidden here. You see them. Amen. So shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul. When thou hast found it, then there shall be a reward. And expectation shall not be cut off. Kai. Just, please, go on and read. Give me uh, the same thing, um, living. In the same way, wisdom is sweet to your soul. If you find it, you will have a bright future. And your hopes will not be cut short. Who is here that has an ambition? 
In future, you want to become this. It is wisdom that will make sure that this expectation of your heart will not be cut short. Look, let me show you. It's come. Sharon, come. Let me show you. Uh, this, is, this is you. Are you getting me? Sorry. This is you. All of you. This is you. Okay? Stay there. This is you. Now, uh, okay, to where, where uh, the sound guys are, the technical guys are there. Her future, what she dreams of, what she imagines, the expectations of her heart is to be there. You see? It's to be there. Her, the brightness of her future, the hopes of her future is to be there. That's all she wants. You want to be the biggest musician in Africa. It's good. You want to be the biggest businessman. You want to be a politician. You want to be a governor of this state. You want to do this. You want to do that, right? We all have those dreams, do we? Come on, talk to me. We have that. You want to build the biggest kitchen in West Africa, the biggest restaurant. You want to do this, right? Is that right? You, you guys must answer me. Is that right? Good. All of us have them, including me. I have mine too. Do you want to know mine? Why? Guluma, you don't need to. <laughs> so I have mine. Everybody has theirs. She wants to get there. And in the same way, wisdom is sweet. If you find it, you will have. It means, look at it. That's what I told you earlier. It means wisdom. Assume I'm the wisdom now. I'm some way. You have seen that? Everybody look at me. You must, you must understand this illustration. This is me. With, okay, let's say sojourn is the wisdom. is hidden away from her. But that is where she needs to go. That's her future. Are you getting me? The Bible is telling us, instead of her to go to her future, forget about the future, look for the wisdom. You see? Katashi, take Katashi. She has found you. They embrace him. And guess what? That place will be what? Sure. Why? Because this guy, wisdom, will guide her. When they get here, you say, hey, raise your leg. There's something here. Don't do this. Don't do that. And she'll get it. Try for them. You guys must understand this thing. So stop telling me my ambition is I want to be this. Look for wisdom first. Because your wisdom will guarantee your ambition. Wisdom will guarantee your ambition, your future, your hopes, your expectations are guaranteed with wisdom. Is the Bible that is saying it? Is someone you are seeing it? Last verse. Proverbs. No. Second Timothy. Let's conclude. Second Timothy chapter 3. Verse 15. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. Are you, getting, are you getting blessed? Are you getting blessed? You have been taught the Holy Scriptures from. Uh, no, no, give me King James Version now. And that from a child. Thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. If you check out here, this verse is giving us two things. It is also one of the verses that I'm going to quote next week. Did you see that? Um, I told you next week I'll give you five, five or six, I'm not sure, five places where Wisdom is hidden. Where is wisdom hidden here? No, 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 no. Look at it. Huh? No, look at now. Huh? Scriptures is here. And that from a child thou has known the holy scriptures. You see? Which scriptures? The scriptures that are able to make thee wise. 
You see? So one place that wisdom is hidden is scriptures. This guy became wise because he knew the scriptures. So it means wisdom is hidden in scriptures. You see now? But that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about this wisdom led him through salvation. When I book called, it's dangerous though. This explanation is dangerous. Ah, it's dangerous. Give, give me, put in NLT so that you see it clearly. NLT. You have been taught the Holy Scriptures from childhood and they have given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Christ Jesus. Kai, are you guys seeing what I'm seeing? It's, it's dangerous though. There is, you're going, it's going, this thing, bar. that's why if you are here, if you know you don't come to church tomorrow, you are going home with half knowledge of this explanation. But next Sunday to be complete, you will see one of the places that wisdom is hidden that will explain this part. So if you are going to miss church next Sunday, make sure you get the recording for next Sunday so that when you balance it, you understand. If not, you, you go with half knowledge, which is dangerous. Okay? Look at it carefully. Does this tell you that it takes wisdom to get salvation? Only that this wisdom here is a special kind of wisdom that you see next week. You're going to see with your eyes. Do you know the kind of wisdom it's called? It's called foolishness. You're going to see it. There is a type of wisdom that is called foolishness. <laughs> the world, the logic and science sees it foolishness. In the eyes of God, this is wisdom. So this foolishness, this type is a type of wisdom. This type of foolishness will lead you to salvation. Like, I surrender everything. You know it's foolish. This guy will slap you. You will not answer. You know it's foolish. Hey, this guy wronged you. You are right. Can't you do, do this to him? No, I won't. That's foolishness. It is that type of foolishness that leads to salvation. So this, this will be complete by next week. By God's grace. Father, we thank you. How many of you have seen the need for wisdom? Like, man, I need to get this wisdom. Because that's the essence of today's teaching. I need to get this wisdom. So the next question is, where is the wisdom? Next Sunday, I will show you five or six places where this wisdom are hidden. And guess, guess what? They are practical. They are very close to you. It is something you can, you, while I'll be teaching, you can begin to apply them. Begin to apply them and it works. Wisdom is there. Are you getting me? Father, we thank you for today. We give you glory. Thank you for opening our eyes. The insight to see the need for wisdom. Thank you. Come on, everybody open your mouth. Open your mouth and say, oh God, I need this wisdom. Now my eyes are open. I can see the reason why I need this wisdom. The reason why I need this wisdom. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. We hope you had a wonderful time listening to the message. For prayers, counseling, and other inquiries, please call the number 080-6578-3427. Have a great day.